making a better name I've dubbed this setup the Kraken of the, the MIDI guitar setups uh, since it's sort of an amalgamation of everything I've shown you up till now so I'll go into details along the video I guess but uh, the main part of it is set up with two audio interfaces the a focus right solo as an audio out as a point of reference audio in is as i've shown you before the gp10 uh, the roland uh, synth pedal but i'm also only using the six or it's actually eight uh, channels in audio uh, that's available via usb from that so from that particular pedal that also means that mm -hmm. i have to dig out this old uh, war horse it's an ibanez and i have this uh, 13 pin cable here it's uh, not actually what i like to work with but you go with what you got and you go with what works so what I wanted this time is the full six channels in and one instrument for each string, or at least one channel for each string. The big difference from before is actually Camelot Pro. In my case, it's a VST host or an instrument FX host, much like main stage would have been earlier on, but for different reasons, main stage really didn't take off as, as uh, something I would use. Uh, it was kind of clunky setting up presets I think it worked but it wasn't all that good uh, Camelot Pro on the other hand is way better with regard to setting up say channels in for uh, different instruments and for uh, all types of controls I did this today just as an example of violin on the first two strings and I have a viola on the third string cello on the fifth on the fourth and fifth and uh, on the low E I of course have the double bass so This would sound, uh, of course, like any other setup you have heard me play, with the big difference that now I actually can play those minor second intervals that I haven't been able to play from before. In this case, we have monophonic tracking for six instances of MIDI guitar. So each instance of MIDI guitar is uh, responsible for one string at a time. So it never comes to that problem with identifying and translating intervals. They are being represented as audio, so. And what you heard at the end there uh, was a perfect example of the things you can do that you haven't been able to do uh, before as well. Sticking with one note relatively unchanged and uh, actually bending the, the other note for as much as you like. This, on the other hand, uh, demands a lot from you as uh, a guitar player uh, in terms of new ways of handling your strings and handling how you create notes and think about uh, playing. This is more like the Rolly Seaboard stuff where you can really creatively use any slides into or away from any sort of note clusters, if you will. So this is perfect for the uh, budding modernist player, of course. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now you saw in the end there, you saw uh, one of the things that I think that uh, Camelot Pro does so very well. In this case, I have my breath controller sending out CC64. That would be a hold message or a, a pedal down or a sustain pedal uh, for an, any piano. But it also affects any instruments like a violin to hold that note. And I didn't intend to use it here, but you can use it as a background for anything else you will play over. So you can uh, strike that note, bite down on the mouthpiece. In my case, I use the bite sensor for this. And then you have that note to play over for the rest of the time uh, until you stop biting down on the sensor, of course. Uh, but I don't want this, so I'm going to use filter out the CC64 message that I'm sending with this. I don't want to turn this off since I'm using this in for other instruments and I do want to have it available all the time. Yet for this particular instrument I don't. And I realize now it's the first string uh, violin. So I just go into that violin. In this place here we have something called filter. I go to MIDI transformers, filter, enable filter and click on the sustain damper and what that means is I'm now filtering out any sustain MIDI CC64 messages coming into this instrument. This instrument is not listening to that particular type of information anymore. You can actually see that I have six instances here. It's first string, second string, third string, fourth string, fifth and sixth and I've done the, the same thing for those as well. So the thing is when I bite down on this now nothing will happen instead and I don't have that note lingering as I did before. I can of course still use that note to play over but then I would have to do it uh, the old way or uh, standard style that is pressing down on the actual note I want at the same time as I blow into the breath controller. And that takes some practice to actually be able to hold that note while playing the other notes or playing some sort of melody on top of that. But that's the way I really want to do it since that's the way you actually work with some sort of control over the input you're feeding with the guitar software. You know what you're putting in and you know what should come out. And if there's a discrepancy there, okay, then you'll perhaps have to go to the software. But as long as you have some sort of idea about what you want coming out, you should be able to input it without effects I think but also uh, working with sustain pedal I do that all the time so if that's not an effect that's really more of a tool for me so is this the only thing then uh, making a string quartet or whatever that's that would be the Kraken of MIDI guitar. I say no since I'm referring to both the setup with the dual uh, audio interface, a guitar with some sort of hex pickup on it. You need that as well to get to these six channels in. And then you have these uh, MIDI guitar instances, six of them, one on each channel in Camelot Pro. Let me show you some other preset first. So 
by the push of a button, I hope I have the next uh, sort of setup ready. So in this setup, it's this is more experimental, and I have a bass patch for Falcon here. All the synth patches are the Breath of Falcon from uh, uh, the art of wind synth. I've shown these before. Uh, so. <laughs> You know about this as well. This is the sample modding uh, trumpet. I've used it all the time for those Miles stuff things. Then I have two more synths from um, Falcon as well on the next two strings. And then I have a soprano sax. Uh, in the cases with the soprano sax, I've used the CC64. I've used that for uh, an overblow effect. that's from biting down on the mouthpiece so i'm using it at the same time as i'm using it on as an hold on the sixth string here uh, i'm using uh, the same cc64 message as cc4 message to the audio modeling uh, sax to overblow on and this is also one of the beautiful features in camelot pro they have a message transformer in the same place as where I filtered out the, the message. So I can easily go into the interface and just uh, type in that I want the incoming CC64 to be translated as uh, CC4 in this case for this particular instrument, really in this case for this particular string and that instrument. So, and that goes perhaps only for the song uh, or for the whole set list or for the whole uh, setup, whatever. It's really easy to set up. So, uh, wonderful opportunities with this software. One of the things that was a problem before when I used this six channels in into Ableton was a lack of clarity or a lack of distinction. And I think it's due to these uh, types of microphones. Uh, they don't have the, they at least don't produce the same quality of dynamic control that a pure magnetic mic into MIDI guitar 2 does but for these type of instruments it doesn't really matter I mean so much of the expression is down to how I use the breath control and I really only have to blow a bit harder to use it with some sort of control in this case so 
for all of these synth stuff uh, and even the of course uh, strings everything that i control with the breath controller is is perfectly fine but when it comes to say uh, the piano i kind of not I'm, I'm not really super happy with it uh, for that since i have i'm i'm used to a much uh, higher degree of clarity and a more distinct contact with the instrument from before uh, just playing magnetic microphone into the midi guitar 2 software i can show you uh, again with shifting just the preset here so now i have a piano set up and the thing that differs using only traditional microphone into the MIDI Guitar 2 software is that you can use these grand chords nowadays and it doesn't matter uh, you don't get you don't get in trouble you used to and also you have the minor too of course But uh, as I told you, I don't get that sense of connection. It still feels like some sort of latency. And perhaps it's due down to the setup, the microphone setup. Perhaps I can raise it even more. But I mean, it's, it's kind of optimized and it works fine for everything else. So I'm going to go with this setup for everything I'm going to use when I'm using six channels in as with uh, with the synth stuff and with all these experimental stuff until I can uh, start using uh, MIDI Guitar 3 that is actually uh, going to give me the same sort of features but only from the software and then I can use go back to using my uh, magnetic pickups again and also use my uh, wireless setups for everything. I don't have a wireless setup for the GK mic. It's uh, way too much money for my tastes. But I mean, uh, to start with, I have this wonderful setup and I can only say, uh, at least try out uh, Camelot Pro. It's free to try out. And I think you can have 10 instances of uh, stuff open in it, say, five instruments and perhaps some uh, midi guitar and some instruments but 10 is 10 is kind of few so you'll reach the limit quite fast but at least you get to try uh, to work with it and it, i i would venture to guess it's going to be uh, the stuff that people in the future are going to work with i'll put the links in uh, the video description of course <laughs> 